Hi all, many of you have been asking that how do we customize any LLMs for our own specific task on our own custom data set. In this particular tutorial, we shall be learning how to fine tune any LLM on your own custom data set for a specified task. We shall be building custom GPT and we shall train a GPT-2 model for text classification task. The same could be applied across various different types of models such as BERT and BART. Let me show you the list of models on which you can apply the same technique that we are going to discuss in this particular tutorial. So now here we see Albert, Bart, Big Bird, Big Bird Pegasus, BioGPT, and there are numerous other models including T5 on which you can apply the very well same techniques. Right? So let us move ahead and see the step-by-step three-step approach in order to fine tune your own LLM on any specified tasks such as text classification, question answering, summarization or any other. So in order to proceed, we need to understand the three broad steps. The first step involves preparing and loading the data set. The second is about loading the model and tokenizer. And third is the training pipeline. Obviously, after all this, we shall move ahead to the inference section where we shall use our own pre-trained model to inference on the data, right? So for the very first step, preparing and loading the data set, here we shall use a data set available within the Hugging Face data set folder. We shall be using the dire emotion data set. You can use any other data set of your own choice, right? You can head over to the data set section and then work around loading any data set for text classification as and when required by your tasks. You can even use your own custom data set, prepare them in specified formats and then load them using the data loader of hugging face right if you want me to cover the data loader section as a separate aspect we can definitely do so in the future videos now here we shall be using data set dire ai emotion data set in this data set we have text which are kind of comments and for each of these comments there are basically six different labels so this is a multi-class classification data set and the labels include as sadness, anger, love, surprise, fear, joy. There are basically six different categories, including anger. Right? So just take a look at some of the sample examples here. And now we shall head over to our notebook section. So we import or we basically install the dataset library of Hugging Face and thereby import load dataset from this dataset library. We pass the name of the dataset that we need to load and then our data set is loaded let me show you a sample of the data so for example the data set itself contains 16,000 training labels 2,000 validation and another 2,000 for test since we shall be doing this for educational purposes for understanding how things work and we are running this on a collab environment with limited resources thereby we shall sub sample this entire data set and fine tune only on the sample data right so just look at some of the examples that we already loaded here. Now, in order to load the sample of this data set, what we can do, we can specify the split parameter here, wherein we can specify the number of samples for each of the splits that we are undertaking. Remember this split has to be built. Basically this split has to again be generated after we load the sample data set. So say for example, once we load this sample data here, with 1000 samples from the training set and 250 samples from the validation set, we get a total of 1250 rows which comprise of text and the label as our features. Now we further split down this into train and test, basically train and validation with a test size or validation size of 0.2 here and we have our data as here. Let me just print this data in order to help you understand how things are. So it has two different data set dictionaries. One is a train, other is a test. Train contains 1000 rows and test contains 250 rows because we specified it for a 20% split, right? Now that our data is loaded, what we need to do next is load the model and the tokenizer. We shall then install three other libraries, install transformers, evaluate and accelerate all from the hugging face. And uh, one more thing to note here is if you want to upload your pre-trained model back to Hugging Face Hub, 
then you need to log in using the Hugging Face API credentials with the right access. We are currently not loading them back to the Hugging Face Hub, rather we shall use them locally. So from Transformers, we import Auto Tokenizer. And since we are using GPT-2 base, base model, so we shall load GPT-2 base model. And we, since we know that GPT-2 base model does not have a padding token, it has been trained uh, in such a way that it does not include the padding token directly. And for our task, since we shall be running in batches, we need to have a padding token. Therefore, we specify the AOS token as our pad token for the tokenizer. Our tokenizer is now loaded and we create a pre-process function in order to process the tokenizer along with truncation and padding. Even if you can do this directly without using the function as well, uh, but just uh, in order to create a mapping, we use this functionality. Now, in order, we shall be applying this function to the entire data that we have and we use it, use the map function in order to create that with batching equal to true. We have a tokenized data. Let me show you an example of the data that we have, right? So under tokenized data, we shall sample out from the training set, the label zero. And this is how our data looks. This is the sample text corresponding label, the input IDs that are generated by the tokenizer, right? We now need to create ID2 label and label to ID. So ID2 label and label to ID are nothing, just mapping between your labels in integer format and your actual representations for those labels. For example, zero represents sadness, one represents joy. How I came across this is from the data set itself. Here, if you see, it clearly depicts that one represents joy, two represents love, zero represents sadness. So in this manner, I generated this. Nothing fancy here. Now we shall load our model. We use auto model for sequence classification and we load the GPT-2 model. We specify the number of labels and we pass ID to label, label to ID. We all, since we are running the collab in T4 environment, GPU enabled. So we load the model to CUDA to make things faster. Right. Now coming to our data and training pipeline, things are very simple when using hugging face. We shall be using the trainer library of Hugging Face in order to create the training pipeline and we shall use data collator in order to effectively manage our data to be trained in batches. So we pass our tokenizer to data collator with padding. This, this is just uh, to represent the number of labels that we have and different class counts, right? Basically the frequency of each of these labels in the data set that we have. So we see this is an imbalanced data set. Now, the reason I wanted to show you is because if we directly use the accuracy metric, it would not be a good representation of our evaluation or, or the results of the training process. Rather, for an imbalanced setting, it is advisable to use other metrics such as F1 scores uh, or ROC AUC scores as, a, as whatever you find suitable for your task, right? You can choose other metrics as well. You can head over to the metrics section in the hugging phase and there are various different types of metrics such as generic metrics, task specific metrics like blue, rogue, right? These are for machine translation tasks. Then we have data set specific metrics. So all these metrics you can directly load and use them. We have this metric created now. We need to create a compute metric functionality. So under compute metric functionality, we just uh, create we just pass the evaluation predictions. So predictions include the predictions and the true labels. We convert these predictions are actually in the form of kind of probabilistic outputs. We take the R max in order to create the actual labels, integer labels. And we compute the F1 score by predictions, references, and then we take the average as weighted. To talk, to learn more about this F1 score and average, I'll share the link in the description. You can go ahead and see what are the different types of averaging techniques, the micro, macro, weighted, right? These are just to enable the, uh, to help us in the imbalance class setting, right? That is why we are using weighted. Now, our training pipeline has to have a set of steps. Again, we further break down our training pipeline into three steps. What are these three steps? These three steps include defining the training hyperparameters, then passing the training arguments to trainer along with the model, data set, tokenizer, data collator, and compute metrics function. 
and then finally calling the train to fine tune our model. So very simple. Even if this video goes a little longer than expected, right? Don't worry about it. You will understand things very simplistically and in a step by step fashion, you will be able to fine tune your own GPT models, build your own custom GPT and not just GPT, any other LLMs as well. Right? We also discussed about fine tuning using PEFT, LoRa, those techniques using auto LLMs. I'll attach the link to them in the i link above as well as in the description. Check them out after watching this video. Now we load the training arguments and trainer from the transformers library. And we also like as we said like GPT-2 itself does not have a padding token. For the tokenizer we set the padding token already as EOS token. For the model as well we need to set the pad token id as us token id right now for the first step of our training pipeline we specify the training arguments or basically the hyperparameters for fine tuning our model the most important parameter that we need to specify here is the output directory where our fine tuned model needs to be saved and then we specify the learning rate per device train batch size per device eval batch size training epochs evaluation strategy logging strategy load best model attend and if we want to push our fine-tuned model back to hugging face hub then we need to specify push to hub parameter as true and remember that we then need to log in using the hugging face api token with write enabled right and as for this arguments hyper parameters we then move on to the trainer as a second step and under the trainer we pass our model our training arguments we specify the train data set evaluation data set tokenizer data collator and compute metrics so we set our training hyperparameters and we have created our trainer object and now very simplistically we just call trainer.train and in order to save time i already ran through this for 20 epochs and the results are visible as if you see the f1 score has improved from 0.27 to 0.77 while at the same time the validation loss reduced from 1.89 to 0.71 well, this is not the best performance there is still scope for improvement you can play around with this you can fine tune for more epochs you can put in more data in order to fine tune as you know that a gpt2 based model is also a comprising of 100 plus million parameters right 100 million parameters approximately so the more data you are able to provide more quality data you are able to provide the better results you are able to get right let me now show you the model where we uh, the model which we have fine-tuned right it, it is loaded here in the collab view and we see the various checkpoints that we saved after each epoch training since we got the best result with our last checkpoint which is checkpoint 640 we shall be using that in our inference pipeline we already talked about hugging face pipelines in a separate video where we discussed uh, building various tools using hugging face here like using the transformers library you can go ahead Check it out after watching this video. I'll attach in the i link above. Now we call this task as text classification and load our model here. We can run a pass in any text and get the output, the corresponding output. Hi, I'm feeling nostalgic. It is predicting it as love emotion and the score is 0.93, pretty confident. We can even check using our own data, pass in batches with the things that we already discussed in detail about the pipelines, right? So you see uh, we are getting the desired results and with this we come towards the end of our fine tuning lecture and i hope you learned the three steps well and in these three steps you would be able to fine tune most of the open source llm models build your own custom gpt hope you learned something new see you in the next lecture have a nice day bye bye jai hind